Hi, it's Bruce Berry in La Casa de Caddisfly. And today we're gonna tie a European nymph. Uh, it was pretty fun a few years ago when that got all the rage. I wanted to get into it. I bought a couple of books. I learned how to do it. I figured out quickly that a Euro nymph and a nine foot five weight and a bobber with Western techniques don't really do what the Euro nymph thing can do. It's a great learning process if you're a good fisherman. It's a fun and easy process if you're not a skilled experienced fly fisherman. And uh, the technique is, is a dynamite way to catch fish. So we're gonna put together one of my flies called the PCP. It stands for pink, copper, and peacock. Yeah, PCP. <laughs> Did that right. All right, here we go, we're gonna start tying. Okay, so for today's PCP, we're gonna tie it on a size 14 hook. I'm just gonna throw that in the vise real quick. This happens to be an A-Rex FW555. Uh, the original ones I was tying on a folding mill dry fly hook, which also has that tactical point and you know barbless style. And when you put the mass of the bead up, you can still make a regular non-jig hook work like a jig. Um, since then, I've kind of moved. I've used MFC hooks. I've used folding mill. I've used what are the sticks and stones, match sticks or whatever. Fire hole. Fire hole. Pick your favorite hook. It'll work. This is a 3.8 bead copper on a size 14. You could also go with a 3.3. You could probably even go bigger to a 4.7 if you wanted to. But 14.38, 14.33, 16.33, 16.2.8, those are pretty good sizes for this fly. And then to keep that bead in place, some folks like to do thread dams. I like to do a little bit of zap -a gap Just weld it up a little bit, push that in there, hold it with the fingernails. That's pretty straight down the pipe, 10 or so seconds and then we're good. <clears throat> So being a zapper gap bead guy, if I'm gonna tie two dozen, I'm gonna do two dozen beads and then come back and tie the flies on them. Um, go with what you will. Thread today, we're going with something pretty hot. I've tied them with that, which is called fluorescent pink. I believe it's 508, maybe Danville, six aught. This actually looks like fluorescent pink, but it's actually called fluorescent red. Don't let it fool you. It's pink and it's vibrant and it shines like crazy with a little UV. Uh, any of that range will work. I like the hotter pink for this fly because they're just small tags. So what we'll do is start the thread and go down to about halfway on the hook point. And we're gonna build a little bit of the body taper into this via thread, as the peacock doesn't really give you. It'll look like it has taper till it gets wet. And it'll look like a skinny noodle. We'll pack a few behind the bead and come down a little bit past our halfway point. On back up again for another layer. You can see that taper kind of starting to form. This is probably the longest and most tedious part of the fly, otherwise it's fairly easily done. So now we'll get rid of that tag. And if you look at those PCPs, they have a little hot spot in the back, just a couple wraps, like a three or four turn. The tail's probably gonna start right there. So one, two, three, four, bring it forward and back to the front. And tail-wise, there's a lot of things we can use. Uh, we're going with Coke de Leon or CDL. I've always gone with a medium. They make lots of different colors. It's kind of spindy, it's stiff, it's good stuff. Um, I've tied a lot of these flies with just a partridge skin. Hungarian partridge works really nicely. You could use gadwall. You could use silver pheasant. You could use mallard flank. Try to get the salt and peppery, like good contrasty ones. Some of them are a little bit muted if you go mallard or you can even go teal flank, which is really nice as well. Just a few fibers works. Today we're going with Coq de Leon Medium. So to get in there, if you're a tail counter for fibers, 17, I have no idea. It's probably a magic number, a little pinch. And then once you get the tips all lined up, sometimes you have to pull them downwards. Broken one in there. Only on video does things. Okay, so those tips are lined up. Grab them, pull out away, and we're ready to go. Tail proportion, I like to go from behind the bead to where my tie-in point's gonna be. So that's a little long. And boom, that should be right. So I'm gonna replace that there. I don't know why on Euro nymphs if I'm tying Spanish bullets or pertagons or anything like that. I like taking everything from the bead. So we'll bring that back so we have that little bitty hot spot in the back, like right there. 
and there we go. So PCP is, um, you know, it's a fairly new fly. I think it's been around for Montana Fly Company for a couple years. This is kind of a cool video today because it's a fly you can either decide to tie or buy. You can get it commercially. Most fly shops in the Northwest have it. And then, you know, there's lots of good flies. I've tied lots of different flies. I started Euronymphin by reading books and using like Egan darts and different Perticons and different Spanish bullets that were out there. Um, we're actually going to put a picture on like right now on the video that'll have a picture of a fly box. But this one particularly just seems to work all 12 months of the year in just about any waterway. So it's kind of a go-to confidence fly. That's why we're tying the PCP. So it's just a few materials from here. It's a copper rib, a mylar flash, and some peacock. So I'm going to take the piece of mylar, and this is just pearl flashaboo, one strand. I tie that down the tire side. That's going to end up getting counter-wrapped. We'll take the wire, which is just an extra small copper. Far side, we'll bring that down. That's going to end up being kind of like your regular wrap to lock in the counter wrap flash. And a couple pieces of peacock. This happens to be off a of peacock, like kind of a hurl rope or boa. This is nature spirit. They make pretty good stuff. If you can get it off the eye and you've got good stuff, it's probably even nicer. So I'll get rid of some of those tips. Again, right behind the bead. If you have really good hurl, you can probably get away with two pieces. I'm using three, it's a little bit skinny. Any more than three, you'll find as you're winding it up, it'll tend to splay and kind of walk and run around on you. So three is probably the magic number. Get that first wrap in there. Nice, work our way up. Touching wraps. And then once I get up there, I'm going to get one good wrap in tight behind that of the bead. There we go. Here we go back to our Mylar rib. That lays down first. Pearl flash is going to be counter wrapped, so I try to do four and out on five. One, two, three, four, out on five. That worked. So you're doing that the same way as the peacock? Opposite. Peacock, regular, this counter. <laughs> and then this one is going to go the same way as the peacock was wrapped. Oh, okay. And give the mylar some durability. I don't know what it is about trout and copper, but they like it, so I like fishing it. Four, out on five, we'll bring that right into the hole of the bead. One, two, three. And this fluorescent red, as it were, um, it's pretty bright stuff. I don't think you need a lot of it. I like using this Pro Sport Fisher, it's a UV Thin Flex. Just dot a little bit on the thread. Might have been more than a little bit. Carefully wind that on. Essentially a half hitch. And there's the finished PCP. Probably 14s and 16s are my favorite. Give it a shot under a chubby on an actual Euro setup. Just traditional Nymphin it works. This is a pretty good versatile all over the Northwest trout fly. Thanks for looking.